Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to talk about plate buckling. We will go through one example that might be a little bit different from the uh, examples in the books and we will calculate what is the critical buckling load of a plate. And also we can stiffen the plate by several stiffeners as a beam element and we will see how it would affect the buckling capacity. So assume we have a plate which is supported in three edges as shown and it has one long edge to be free without any support. So this can be because of the opening or it is not supported by any other means and the load coming to this plate is uh, the compression let's say in the longitudinal direction. Suppose that the plate thickness is T the longitudinal length is L and the other dimension is H. And we need to assume the coordinate, assume that the longitudinal direction is X and Y the other direction. As a result, we can say that this load is N in X direction. Now the idea is to calculate the critical load of this plate. As the plate is supported in three edges, we need first to assume what kind of deformation we would expect. So it is clear that the free edge would deform in maximum compared to other points. And also the edges are with the minimum deformation. So what would be the deformation? It's coming to be less and less when it comes to the connected edge. And also in the other direction, we can sketch a nice mesh. So this is how it would deform after uh, increasing the load and after buckling. Now if we look at the top view, so here we have supports in X direction and the deformation looks like a complete sinus. The length is in, in this direction is L. As a result, we can assume that in X direction, in every level of Y, it's uh, deforming like a sinus. So for this, we can write down that this can be sinus i x divided by l. And if you look at the other side in y direction, we have only one support in the bottom. And as far as it is hinge, so we expect that there is nothing to resist this structure in y direction. As a result, if we look at the deformation in that direction, we will see that it's like a line. So it's coming out. And what is limiting this uh, y not to uh, be unstable is the function of sinus in the other direction. So the height is h and as we can see it's uh, like a line and we can write that this is y. It is better if we assume that it's a function of y over h and it represents the angle of deformation. Now we can write down the omega which represents the a uh, function of deformation as a multiplication of these two independent functions. So omega will be sinus pi x divided by L times y divided by h. But we know that uh, this should be multiplied by a constant coefficient. We can assume it's a. Now we can sketch this uh, on MATCAD to see how it looks like when we sketch it. Omega is a function of a x l and h and it's a times sinus i times x divided by l times y divided by h so this is the function and also y for example we can sketch this uh, to see how it looks like in the plot menu insert and a 3d plot so here we can write what omega is assume that uh, a for now we are just going to see what's the uh, shape and how it looks like so l assume that l is for example three times y or l is three times h and so then you need to limit for example in x direction it's from zero to three and in y direction it's from zero to one here we can see how it looks like and also you can play with the colors or you can use the surface fill 
so here we can see how it looks like and how our uh, assumption looks like if you want to have a better uh, graph you can increase this to 10 and here we can see how it looks like so we can have this as a picture in our notes and we can see if we change it to for example plus y divided by h then you can see that it's uh, not restricted to be admissible function for this assumption as a result and also there is a uh, history about how to assume these kind of admissible uh, functions which is related to advanced mathematics which is out of the scope for this uh, video and now then when we find the admissible function for the calculation we need to write down the total potential energy total potential energy is uh, coming from the uh, stored total potential energy because of the deformation and also the loss or loss of energy which is coming from the uh, force which is applied to the section so total function or total potential energy will be u plus v and for u we can write down that it is d divided by 2 integration of omega x x square plus omega y y square plus 2 new omega x x omega y y plus 2 times 1 minus new omega x y square and it's always on the domain of the area so now we have omega and we have u function and v which is minus nx divided by 2 integration of omega x square ea so we have to notice that at the moment n is only applied in x direction and when it shrinks towards x direction then we have loss of energy in that direction if you have force also in y direction we have to apply that load for the deformation so for now we have only uh, v due to nx so the rest we can go through the matcat and write the code so as far as this function is going to be uh, aligned uh, equation i prefer to write down as a function so u of plate it's a function of d and a and l and h and also nu so it's omega x x s square by respect of x two times and the function is omega it should be powered by two plus the same equation this time by respect of y and then plus two times nu times by respect of x only one time and by respect of y only one time plus 2 times 1 minus nu plus 2 times 1 minus nu multiply by for the derivative by respect of 2 here we can add another derivatives by respect of y and it should be powered by 2 so here we have also x and y as the parameters now it looks fine and i can name this as the function so function of u and this is not a function of d yet you can just ignore now u of the plate as a function of now d a now we do not have x and y because the integration is uh, removing those so it will be d divided by 2 multiplied by integration so it's double integration from 0 to l by respect of x and again another integration by respect of y from 0 to h and the function is function u so that's uh, the potential energy due to the deformation and now we need to write down the v which is the loss of energy it's a function of nx and a and also l and h and there is no new so it will be minus nx divided by 2 times again double integration from 0 to l in x direction and in y direction it will be from 0 to h and this is only the first derivative i can bring it from here over by 2 so now we have the u and v without any stiffener we can write the pi function it will be a function of d a 
l h nu and also n x so it will be u plus v so when you write the total potential energy it will be as far as it's uh, powered by 2 and a will be powered by 2 so the result will be a function of a and the degree is powered by 2 uh, for the member or line element the first derivative of total potential energy by respect of the constant will result in critical load however in surface element the first derivative by respect of the constant will result in equilibrium and the second derivative by respect of the constant will go through critical load so as far as we are solving for the plate here we need to take the second derivative to find out what the critical load is so i can write down n critical for nx critical it will be a function of d and l and h and nu so it will be the second derivative of this function by respect of a equals to zero and solving for nx for that we can use this uh, directly by respect of a second derivative and then here we can use pi function and instead of nx we can use the unknown of x equals to zero and then you can solve it for x and here is the solution we have nx critical as far as i'm going to solve one with the stiffeners it is better if we name this no stiffener for example and also this n critical is going to be no stiffener and here i can add no stiffener so this is the critical load of this plate and uh, without any stiffener let's bring this to our note and also the total potential energy function so here is the calculation of uh, critical load of a plate without any stiffener now let's assume that in the same example we also have the stiffeners so if we have a stiffeners certainly in this case we need to have more capacity for this n x now we are going to calculate now the load is applied to the plate and also the stiffeners are resisting so they have the potential to increase the capacity of uh, the plate so now if we look at the plate in x and y plane support on three edges and here we have some stiffeners if we look at the cross section it looks like to be a t section in uh, in the intervals so now let's assume that the stiffener has a width of b in each side and we assume that it's with the same thickness two options are possible to solve this example one is nx is only applied to the plate or nx is also applied to the uh, beams or or to the stiffeners uh, i solve with the latter assumption uh, but if you want you can try with without applying the load on the stiffeners and just assume that uh, what would be the effect of a stiffener to resist not to consume or lost the energy because of the deformation so and it's in that case is only assumed to be applied to the plate it depends on the task and the question to be solved so now we need to write down u because of beam so it is ei divided by 2 and times integration of omega xx x square da but da is not a correct uh, notation here the reason is that we do not have a stiffener in the whole system we only have discrete uh, stiffeners in every let's say 100 millimeter 500 millimeter one meter so it's not uh, double integration instead it's integration in the direction of the stiffener but in the other direction it's the sum of those stiffeners so let's assume we have h as the height of this plate and we have n stiffeners so if we have n stiffeners then the first elevation as far as this is y and this is x so the first elevation of the stiffener from the x 
horizontal line for axes will be h divided by n plus 1. And the second one will be 2h over n plus 1, and so on. So the i a stiffener, it will be i h divided by n plus 1. As a result, if we have n stiffeners, we need to, instead of integration in y direction, we need to write down summation of these beams. So considering the mentioned statement, this will be dx and it will be from 0 to L. And instead of integration in y direction, it will be summation on y. So ub will be ei divided by 2 summation of integration omega xx. This is 0 to L. And then in this case, omega xx will be a function of x and y. So the deformation function is a sinus pi x divided by L, y divided by h. And if we make the second derivative by respect of x, it will be minus a pi a square L a square sinus pi x over L times y over h. And if we substitute this to the potential energy ei over 2, so it will be a square i power by 4 l power by 4 sinus s square pi x over l and then y square divided by h square and it should be the summation for every single beam stiffener that we have so in that case we can write down this is y i so instead of y we can write down i h divided by n plus 1 as a result, this will be i h divided by n plus 1 s square. And as far as this is completely independent from x, we can take it out from integration. I have to write here dx. So then what we will have, it will be ub equals to ei over 2 a s square pi power by 4 l power by 4 and then summation i s square h s square n plus 1 s square h s square and i is from 1 to n it depends on how many stiffeners do we have and integration from 0 to l sinus s square i x divided by l dx h s square and h s square are gone and this is uh, depending on how many stiffeners do we have if we have 1 2 3 then i s square divided by n plus 1 over by 2. For example, if we have n equals to 2, then it will be summation of 1 to 2 i s square divided by 3 s square. So it will be 1 plus 4 divided by 9 will be 5 over 9. In MATCAD, we can simply uh, calculate this without uh, detailed calculation or detail of the mathematics. So u of a beam, it will be a function of a, l, and h, and also e, and i, and also the number of stiffeners. So it will be e multiplied by i divided by 2 times summation, we have it here, and the only iterative uh, parameter is i, i equals to 1 to n, and then integration from 0 to L and here is omega x x over by 2 dx. So here the only thing we need to change is the uh, y because instead of y we need to write down i times h divided by n plus 1. That's all. And the v or the last energy will be minus if we remember from the earlier videos it is always minus p divided by 2 integration by v prime s square dx and here instead of v the deformation function is omega and also we have several stiffeners as a result we can rewrite this as v of the beam will be minus now the force which is applied to the plate so n 
x is always force divided by length for example it can be kilonewton per meter but this force here is the total force so it is always force which is kilonewton for that we need to calculate what is the force coming to each element if we assume that the load is applied to the plate and also to the stiffeners in that case we have here is the plate and here is the stiffener b and b and if we assume that we have the force coming to this element or to the stiffener so the total force will be nx times 2b now i can rewrite the beam lost energy which will be minus nx times 2b divided by 2 integration omega x s square dA on the surface of A. Again, the same story as far as it's not a continuous function in y direction, we need to change this dA to dx. As a result, this will be from 0 to L and we have to add summation for the number of stiffeners that we have. So let's simplify it by hand and then go to MATCAD to solve it. Omega is A sinus pi x divided by L times Y divided by H. Omega x will be A pi over L cosinus pi x over L times Y over H and then V of the beam will be minus nx times 2b divided by 2 summation i equals to 1 to n 0 to l a s square pi s square l s square cosinus s square pi x over l times y s square divided by h s square dx and the same story so we can just put this equation in matcad and write the equation so v of the beam it will be a function of let's go with the same s and x and a and l and h what else i think i suppose so it will be minus nx times 2b divided by 2 times summation i equals to 0 uh, equals to 1 to n and then here it will be integration from 0 to l and here will be the first derivative by respect of x dx okay so we have b as well and also n we have the u and v related to the beam and it's time to write down the total potential energy and also finding the critical load so i changed this name to with stiffeners and here we have to add other energies for the beam and here we have to add e and i as well as b and n and this will be also with the stiffeners with the stiffeners again here we need to add e and i and b and n and this should be also added to changing nx by x and you will see something like floor n it's coming from the summation and you don't need to be worried about it if you solve it by hand then perhaps you can find out it easier as far as n is not given here so now let's uh, assume some values for example it's still e is 210 gigapascal and let's assume that we are using a plate thickness of five millimeter the length of the plate is 5 meters and the height is 3 meters. New value 0 0.3 and flexural rigidity D is E D power by 3 divided by 12 1 minus nu S square. So we can use this information to calculate the critical load of the plate. So E equals to 210 gigapascal and E is 5 millimeter. L is 5 meters, H 3 meters, and nu 0 0.3. Flexural rigidity is E times D power by 3 divided by 12, 1 minus nu square. So simply we can determine what is the critical load, Lonioton 
per meter. So it's two kilonewton per meter without any stiffeners. So without any stiffeners, then x critical is about two kilonewton per meter. Now let's assume that we are going to use only two layers of stiffeners. And let's assume we have only 50 millimeter with the same thickness. So B will be 50 millimeter, the same thickness. And then we need to calculate also moment of inertia. If we look at the section, we have the plate crossing between two stiffeners, B, B, and we can approximate moment of inertia will be T times 2B over by 3 divided by 12. So let's apply these to MATCAD and check what would be the critical load. B is going to be 50 millimeter. Number of the stiffeners, we have two levels. It will be four stiffeners. And moment of inertia is E times 2B over by 3 divided by 12. And now we can calculate this value, kilonewton per meter. So it's 20. We can see that it's almost 10 times greater than without the stiffeners. And what is the use of material? We can see that uh, compared to uh, the dimensions we increased, or the material, we increased the capacity significantly. So coming back to here, with the stiffeners, then an X critical will be 20 kilonewton per meter approximately. So some notes here, for example, if your load is not applied directly to the uh, stiffeners, then we do not have this loss of energy because it is not taking the load. It's just uh, gaining energy because of potential and the deformation and the strain energy stored in the beam element. In that case, we can see that this 20.14 should be slightly increased because there is no loss in the beam element. 21.26, good to know how we need to calculate. And now in this uh, example, we can make different uh, approaches. For example, one interesting question can be, assume the given plate is under compressive load in X direction as five kilonewton per meter. If the buckling capacity is expected to be 10 times greater than applied load, what is the required plate thickness without the stiffeners? B, what is the required plate thickness with two rows of stiffeners? Assume the plate thickness and the stiffeners thickness are the same. So for solving this problem, we can come back to our MATCAD code and you just need to remove this thickness as we are looking for thickness. So the flexural rigidity is a function of T as well as moment of inertia. To solve this, uh, we can simply use solver block. We can write down the guess value is five millimeter, then and critical function d is a function of t now and we are going to have 10 times more capacity than than the applied load the applied load is 5 kilonewton per meter now it should be 50 kilonewton per meter and now we can calculate what is t guess find the guess value so 14 millimeter 14.4 millimeter if we do not use any stiffener also, we can use the same concept to calculate uh, with stiffeners. So D is a function of T guess as well as moment of inertia T guess. And here we can see that it is dropped to 9.75. So you can play with, uh, with B, for example, and change the B to find out what would be the suitable uh, dimension. For example, here, let's, it is assumed that we want to have five millimeter as the result and we are not happy with 9.75 then you need to increase either the number of uh, stiffeners or the width let's go with 75 millimeter and here we can see that it will be completely fine or even you can change it to 70 millimeter you can find out this is 4.9 and it's perfect or for example you are assigned to the task and they say that 50 millimeter is very likely to be used then you need to change the number of stiffeners 
so not with three perhaps with four we can see that okay no not yet but you can increase the number to five and still so you can see that it's not sensitive that much to the number instead it's very sensitive to the width of the plate so 4.5 so then then you can uh, find out what would be the best for you so here i can bring these two as uh, in our notes so without a stiffeners 14.4 and with a stiffeners 9.5 75 millimeter what else we can model this in um, our fem as well uh, to see how it should be modeled for the fem element and fem design that will be covered in the next video thank you for watching that was the end of this example we went through the plate buckling for a plate which is connected to three edges and it was free in the other edge i have been designing something similar in a real work and uh, it's very practical especially when you want to optimize the number of the uh, reinforced plates like stiffeners or you want to optimize the thickness of the plate that's very important uh, before we model with FEM model we can just uh, have a simple calculation to find out how we can optimize the number of reinforcement or I mean stiffeners or uh, the thickness of the plate thank you for watching see you next time bye